Alright guys, welcome back to the GSL Super Tournament. We're in the round of 16 now. This is day one of the round of 16. And first up, we've got Ganji versus MMA. Now, that is an epic match to start off. And I'm, I'm not going to do any like, fancy intros. I'm going to talk about myself. I'm not going to talk about Rob and Clark, my two DT casting, uh, or, you know, DTs just hanging out next to me. I'm not going to talk about that because today I want to talk about MMA who... For those of you guys who don't know, who didn't watch MLG Columbus, you should probably cover your ears now. Just cover them, don't listen to this. But MMA, obviously, for those of you who did watch, those of you who follow esports, those of you who like StarCraft, no, MMA took out the event, won MLG Columbus. So he is a top, top player. He took out, he basically just crushed the foreign scene. Now he's back in Korea. He got back here. I think he got back last night. So, you know, he's a little jet logged, most likely. He hasn't had a lot of time to practice. He's been traveling. But even so, he is back, and he's ready to crush the Korean scene as well. But his opponent is Ganji, someone who took out MVP, definitely an up-and-coming player, someone who I didn't think was that great in TVT. I didn't think his, his skills were enough to take out MVP, but he took out MVP, and he looked pretty strong when he was doing it. So this is going to be a pretty close match. I have to say, I'm myself a little confused. Um, you know, someone's like asking me beforehand, who do you think is going to win? I'm like, you know, I don't know, but I think Ganji will take it. Given that he doesn't have any jet lag, and he has been practicing, he's had a ton of days of practice, he's not flying all over the world, you know, doing big lands and stuff. So I think he's had a lot more time to prepare. Now remember, these guys are teammates as well, so that's another big story in all of this. They're teammates, we've had a lot of team kills here at the GSL Super Tournament, but this is the round of 16, so both players got to be knowing that no matter what, their team's going to look good. But here's our uh, round of 16 Matches first, we're gonna have today, of course, Slayer's Ganji versus Slayer's MMA, Slayer's Ryung versus OGS Juke 2, the best Foyu versus Slayer's Men, TSL Revival versus Marine King Prime. Of course, Marine King playing today as well. I didn't mention him there in my brief little intro, but he's obviously a champion himself. Now, Lenok Foyu versus Slayer's Alicia will be tomorrow, as well as Maka Prime versus Pult Prime Wii, Xenix Line versus OGS Nada, and OGS Top versus I Am Nesty. That is the full. Round of 16. I remember Taste Toasts will most likely be here casting that tomorrow. I'm pretty sure they are. They're scheduled to be. <laughs> so, you know, that's most likely what's going to be happening. So I know a lot of you guys have been excited to see Taste Toasts back. Well, they're getting back today, and they should be here tomorrow to cast those games for you guys. So, look forward to those. There's going to be some awesome games. Alicia is like the chosen one for Protoss right now. The last Protoss left here in the round of 16. Can he pull off a miracle and bring uh, the Protoss race through to the end, or will he fall early on? Something to think about. Now, I did want to mention, for those of you guys who didn't watch yesterday, or maybe watched the VODs, but skipped through all the boring talking part, um, if you go to m.gomtv.net, you can check out the mobile site on your mobile phone. If you've got a smartphone, you can watch the VODs there, you can look at the schedule there, and I'm just telling you guys it's something that producers aren't like, hey, Wolf, tell them about the mobile site. No, I just want to tell you guys because it's so awesome. I looked it up yesterday. I tried it on different mobile phones. It's, like, so cool. It's so nice. It's such a good mobile site. Check the schedules there really easily. Get little pictures of the players. You can even look up records and stuff like that. But also you can watch the VODs, like, right on your mobile phone. You can do it on the subway. Do it wherever you have, you know, internet connection on your phone. Just right there. You don't need your laptop. You can do it on your iPad as well. So definitely, definitely recommend checking that out if you have a smartphone if you don't have a smartphone tell your friends who have smartphones who like starcraft because it's awesome I like ran around the studio yesterday i was telling everyone i'm like you have an iphone i noticed that you should go to m.gomtv.net because it's a pretty awesome site that's how i feel about it anyways so like i said we're gonna have mma versus ganji up here first two slayers players which slayers player will slay the other slayers player <laughs> we're gonna find out and i have to say Overall, based on what I've said earlier, you know, MMA, he did extremely well. He's shown some great results, but I, I thought that Ganji was a better player overall. But after MLG, I'm like, I'm not so sure. But on the other hand, MLG, of course, is pretty taxing, so he may be a little bit tired. He hasn't been able to practice as much, especially, you know, Ganji's been practicing only, only TVT. So we're going to take a look at uh, today's matches. Of course, we uh, talked about the round of 16 earlier, but here's today's matches again. Like I said, Slayer's Ganji versus MMA, Ryung versus Juke2, the best Foyu versus Slayer's Men, TSL Revival versus Marine King, 
Um, the best foe you versus Slayer's Men is going to be an interesting match as well. It's kind of the revenge match. The best said in interviews that he wants to take Slayer's Men out because Slayer's Men knocked him out of Code A. He's now in Code B. So he wants to get revenge. He wants to take on Slayer's Men. So there's a little bit of story there in that uh, set. So uh, you guys have seen today's matches twice. <laughs> and I've talked about all the matches for uh, today in some length. Um, I think Marine King is probably the favorite to advance as well. Just want to talk about him a little bit. I think he actually may be uh, the one to make it all the way to the end. Now, I wanted to mention GOM TV on Twitter. You should check them out. Go follow them. They list every sort of news event, like new casters, uh, tournaments, stuff like that. Um, all the time there on their Twitter. You'll hear it from them first before I tell you about it. So definitely follow them on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, FXO Wolf. But here's Slayer's Gonzi. Look at his results. He's 62nd in the uh, GSL ranking. So that's not that impressive, but he's been doing a lot better here recently. Now, he actually fell out of Code A, losing in the round of 32, but he took out MVP. So it's like, you know, he hasn't done that well in Code A, but he's done well in the team league. And he also took out MVP. So those are some really, really impressive results to just mention. I mean, look at him there. <laughs> that's a shot of him now. You can see him scratch his face there a little bit. But Ganji, and by the way, a lot of people Oh, my Twitter was saying, why do you say Ganji instead of Gonzi? Well, Gonzi is how it's spelled in English, but in Korean, there's actually no Z sound. So the closest thing they have is uh, is a G, like that G type of character. So that's why you say Ganji instead of Gonzi. Now, here's Slayer's MMA. He's ranked 57th, pretty close. Now, of course, to make it through the round 64, he took out Fox, Lin, 2-1. That was kind of a narrow edge, and he also narrowly edged out Supernova. So his TBT, not as impressive as some other Terrans. Because Supernova and Lin uh, are both two players who kind of don't really have the best TBT in the world, but they're pretty good. So you can't knock him for just saying, oh, well, you know, he barely edged over those guys. He's definitely improved a lot, and I think riding off of MLG, being excited, being hyped up on that, may come to help him here, help his confidence. But on the other hand, it may come to hurt him as well. So we'll just have to wait and see. I, you know, I've talked so much about MLG affecting his performance here today, but it really does. It absolutely does. So. As you can see, the win rates here. Ganji, not as high of a win rate versus Terran in recent matches. He's at 40%. Overall, though, he's actually at 53%, so a little bit better. You know, not all of his matches are televised. And of course, there are longer matches there that just aren't shown. And of course, MMA doing a little bit better down there. He's got 66.7% win rate versus Terran. Shot of our studio there, the GSL logo now. We're going to take a look at our maps. Take a look at that Pokari Sweat, by the way. If you come to Korea, you should try Pokari Sweat. I was a little nervous to try it because people were like, oh, yeah, it's kind of weird. You know, it's a little bit different. It's not what you're expecting, but it was really good. Neither of these players eliminated any maps. That's notable. Set 1 will be on Metal... Well, actually, it says Metal Office, but it's actually going to be on Terminus Re. I believe Set 2 and 3 are correct. Yeah, they will be on Crevasse and Dual Site. So Set 1 will be on Terminus Re. <laughs> we actually had the same confusion once before where the map said Metal Office, but it was actually going to be on Terminus. It is really going to be on Terminus. I'm not lying to you guys. I wouldn't lie to you guys, I promise. All right, so two Slayers players. You can see their blue jackets. Their headsets are lighting up. The countdown has started. Actually, the map's loading. Who's going to take game one? Which Slayers player will advance to the round of eight? Ganji versus MMA. Let's find out here on Terminus Re. Slayer's Kanji versus Slayer's MMA. All right. Over here at the right side of the map, a player on the team Slayer's. His name is... He took out MVP, and he is... <laughs> Slayer's Kanji. Slayer's Kanji. There he is now. Oh, he raised his eyebrows at the camera. There's a boxer's girlfriend, Slayer's MMA versus Slayer's Ganji. Some Korean thunder there as well. Now, Ganji's opponent and teammate who recently took out MLG Columbus, a great Terran player in the yellow here at the top of the map is... Slayer's MMA. He's gonna show us some mixed martial arts here at the GSL Super Tournament, the round of 16. Now, are these players gonna go for an early gas? Looks like MMA is planned to not, and actually Ganji as well. Both of them throwing down their barracks first. 
which has started to almost become the abnormal thing to do in this matchup. You see gas first so often in TBT now, because those harassment-oriented builds are so good if you know how to control them properly, and they basically stop fast expands, because even if your opponent fast expands, he's got two command centers making SCBs out of two command centers. You coming in with your harassment, if you're using Blue Flame Hellions, you just kill so many SCVs that you get ahead and expand. If you go for Banshee, sometimes you can just kill so many Marines that you can just kill them with a timing attack. So a lot of players kind of wanting to go with that style, getting that faster gas, getting that faster Viking out. It was the Vikings, kind of helped shut down the drop ships for the Hellions. Of course, um, they shut down Banshees as well. Banshees normally the follow-up for Hellions. But it looks like both of these guys are going to be going for fast expands. Now remember, they're teammates, so part of that does come into play here. They know each other's styles. And it looks like they both just want to try to play out a fast expand type of style and play into a later game. In fact, Ganji is going to go for a super fast expand. It looks like he's even going to skip his first Marine. No, he's not. <laughs> he skipped it for a while to get that command center out. Okay, yeah, so he's... I thought he didn't like the command center yet because I didn't have my production tab open. He's going to bravely not only skip his first Marine, but make his command center on the low ground. You see that... MMA is doing the same thing. So both of these players going for fast expands at their naturals. And Ganji a little bit ahead because he did skip that first Marine. Of course, both players skipping a supply depot as well. And you get that gas up ASAP. So that's how you do it. For those of you guys who don't know how to fast expand with the Terran, if you go for a gas expand after you get the gas up, I mean, in some cases, like in TVP, you don't always do this, but... In most cases, after you start the command center, the command center gets to be about 30 to 50% done. You drop both of your gases immediately and start mining gas out of them so you can get that stim upgrade. And in TVT, for example, you might want to get your factory up ASAP, not even necessarily stim. It all depends on what kind of style you're going for, but got to get those gases up ASAP. It's something I've noticed a lot of newer players when I coach some people or uh, watch my friends play. They're like, oh, I heard about... I mean, they're not bad, but they're like, I heard about this fast sand build. I've never really tried it. And then suddenly they're like making only barracks and... They have too many Marines and they can't tech because they got their gases too late. You get those gases really quickly afterwards. Alright, the factories have started for both players. This time, Ganji a little bit behind with his factory. This is a mirror match for those of you guys who uh, haven't picked up on that yet. So, we'll be talking about a lot of the same things. Both these players almost doing the exact same thing. As you can see, both players have four Marines out in the middle of the map. Both of them with one SCP as well. It's the epitome of a mirror match. But, something else a little bit different, MMA has made two barracks, whereas Ganji is stuck with just the one. A little bit interesting. That means that MMA is going to have more Marines out. He's also going to be able to buffer his siege tanks a little bit easier if he wants to. Marines are not that significant at this, at the, you know, once you pass the very early game, they become a little insignificant because if your opponent scouts, you have more Marines than him, you can do as Ganji is doing and throw down a bunker just to be safe. So that's exactly what you can do. SCV counts for you guys. Dead even at 26. I take it back, it's 25 to 26. MMA in the lead. So MMA actually going to add a tech lab on one of his barracks. Most likely wants to get Stim ASAP. The Starport is finishing up here for MMA. He's going to do a little switch. Ganji is actually going to be going for Pre-Igniter Hellions though. So it's going to be a little difference in the build here. MMA going for Banshees, whereas Ganji is going to try to use that Starport to drop Pre-Igniter Hellions. He may try to drop Marines as well. So another strategy you see commonly is you use the Blue Flame Hellions at the front. If your opponent doesn't make a bunker, you can just run into the natural Hellions, kill as many SCVs as you want, distract your opponent, and then drop Marines into the main. That's another strategy you see very, very commonly in TBT. It looks like we are going to see MMA commit to Cloak here. And Ganji, not really aware of it as the Observer just showed there, wants to find out here pretty soon what his opponent's up to. He may scan, or he may just try to play it safe. Now remember, he is making that first dropship. Now he may want to follow this up with a Viking just to be safe. And indeed, that is exactly what he's going to do. You'll see it on the production tab here in a second. As soon as <laughs> Ganji's supply depot finishes, he will supply block there a little bit. And it looks like it is going to be just as I said. Ganji going to drop Marines and use the Hellions at the front. There are some Marines here back to defend, but with one medevac and, a, and an extra Marine, should be able to clean that up pretty nicely. But if he knows about it, as he does now, he should be able to block with the Marines. Now, MMA, or Ganji, rather, going to have to be very careful. This dropship does not want to lose it. Probably thinks that there's Hellions in that dropship, but in fact, there's not. Now, this Banshee is going to do a little bit of harassment here, picking off Marines and SCVs, whatever she can. Remember that Banshees outrange Marines and just do so much damage. 
that with good control you can really take out those Marines. Once the missile turret goes up though and the Viking comes out, it gets really scary. The cloak is about to finish. Is it going to finish in time? Does finish in time. So that cloak will be out. Banshee going to come in here to the main and do some harassment. Does not want to get too close to that missile turret though. So he's going to pick off mostly the gas SCVs. Knows it got just a little too close to that turret there for a second. And again, a little too close. Does lose the Banshee, but here come the Marines. They are dropped. Or actually, they are not dropped. Locked yet again. He may lose the dropship, but here come the Hellions. And you know what? MMA is on top of it. He has already pulled most of his SCVs. And just barely gets those depots up in time. So while MMA did lose that Banshee, he is doing a great job of blocking these Hellions. Another Banshee coming in here, doing some harassment. He keeps it at hold position. And uh-oh, when, <laughs> when Hellions are fighting tanks, you know something has gone wrong. Banshee looks like she will be chased away. She'll come back to harass another day. Rhyme not intended. You know that, <laughs> that dropship is alive for now, but if MMA wants to make a Viking and kill it, he will indeed do so. And here comes some Vikings actually here to maybe scare the Marines away. He may land these. He wants to get those Marines out so desperately. But MMA, too well defended for that. And it looks like actually the Hellions... Where did those Hellions sneak off to? I'm looking on my screen. Oh, he's brought, brought him back down to the bottom of his main. He's actually added some more Hellions on. So this is becoming a newer style of TBT where you get a lot of factories out. Use those pre-igniter Hellions to control the map. As you can see, Ganji's got three factories back at home. And I was talking yesterday about how Nada kind of pioneered that a little bit. And someone on my Twitter or someone on, uh, on TL or something was telling me, you know, Wolf, you can't forget about Goody. That's true. I feel bad. I didn't mention Goody yesterday. He's been doing this for a long time as well. In fact, he was probably the one doing it before Nada, but Nada kind of made it more mainstream. Face. Goody is definitely with the mech guy. And here comes some Hellions. Sneak in here, try to target down these Marines. There are too many Marines, though, and with a tank there as well. Very difficult for those Hellions to really do anything, so he picks up and leaves. Did do a decent amount of damage, though. Picked off a lot of those Marines. Gonzi has those Vikings out, as you see a shot of now, patrolling around. He wants to spot any sneaky banshees that may try to ruin his day neither player taking a third base just yet but MMA has started his command center back at his natural expansion he's making it there he's going to lift it float it over so MMA is just sticking with the one factory right now so basically what we're going to have as the mid game develops into a late game is Ganji is going to have a better army but MMA is going to have a better economy and that is going to come to play here a little bit that banshee showed herself in the middle of the map at the wrong time. She was picked off. You guys didn't get a shot of it, but these Hellions are trying their best to make something happen. There's Ganji making his third command center. Making it at that third base location. Ganji showing us he's pretty bold. And MMA actually looks like he is going to make another command center. So he's going to be on four CCs here pretty soon. Now, as you can see, Ganji moving out on the map a little bit. There are a lot of Marauders, which are the appropriate choice when your opponent has that Hellion heavy, heavy army. Because Marauders just don't really care about Hellions. Another little drop here. Didn't do a ton of damage. Hellions did survive though, so that was a small victory for Ganji. Now it looks like he's gonna move forward and actually try to put some pressure on here as he's harassed. His tanks are unseized and there are a lot of Marauders. When there are Marauders on top of your unseized tanks, things get pretty bad. And it looks like he will lose these tanks. Good control by MMA. Crushing through this entire army. Now he's got himself a 40 supply lead. That Banshee has stopped the production of that command center. He's going to lose the Banshee. But he did stop production of that command center. And got a few SCV kills along the way. Now he doesn't necessarily have enough to hold this. He does have good siege tank positioning. Now if MMA tries to break the front, it's not going to be a good idea. He wants to go around the back. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Force his opponent on siege. Remember right now, as far as SCVs go, MMA is just a little bit ahead. He's seven SCVs ahead. But in the long run, he's going to have a huge economic advantage, having three command centers up first, having that better saturation, even having a fourth command center completed. So he is in great shape. This command center is going to have to be canceled. So it's going to be three CCs, or rather four CCs against three. He's going to probably take another hidden base with that fourth command center whenever he wants to, really. And we may see a similar situation to what we saw yesterday with Nada versus Virus, where suddenly MMA has a better army and a better economy and just contains his opponent, keeps him in his base, makes missile turrets everywhere, and just slowly takes over battle cruisers and just ends the game. His opponent runs out of money, runs out of steam, 
does get taken out. He's got to break out eventually. So it looks like Ganji's going to try to get aggressive here in the middle of the map. Now, even though he has a smaller army with good positioning, he can win some fights. But the problem is, MMA just has so many Marauders, as you guys can see. Once you have that many Marauders, you just crush through any unseized tanks run into it. Even if your opponent is sieged up, you can just crush through. And those Hellions, unfortunately for Ganji, were a small loss as well. He didn't really get any damage off of them. Was possibly able to check his vision. He may have been able to see that command center. Actually, no, he didn't even see the fourth command center. And look at this. Ganji sieges up first. It's going to be a small victory. But there are so many Marauders, like I said, he may be able to crush through, but the Siege Tanks are spread pretty nicely. They're some of them further back, but it's just not going to be enough. It doesn't look like the Marauders crush through. A lot of them low on hit points, but it doesn't matter because there aren't any more tanks to finish them off. There's that one tank there for Ganji. He's got a lot of SCVs to buffer, but again, losing a lot of his army. And when you're on two bases, when your opponent's on four, and you're, you know, just barely holding off your opponent's attacks, when the reinforcements come in, things get nasty. So as you can see, he has made that third command center again. He's going to lift it, try to take that third base, but Ganji, or rather MMA, is getting so confused about these guys' names sometimes. <laughs> but MMA is going to be able to run in and snipe that CC, so he's definitely outclassing Ganji in this game here today, at least in game one, on Terminus Re. And look, again, he's just going to run down here with his units. He knows he can. He knows his opponent can't have siege tanks in multiple places because the siege tank count is just too low. He's going to target that command center down with his Marauders. Forces that orbital to cancel. Now remember, Ganji does have a lot of Vikings, so that can kind of help him out in the positioning battle. But here's the thing: if you have more Vikings than your opponent, you can outposition him, unless he's got a lot of Marauders. Because then, if you move your siege tanks at all, those Marauders are going to kill all your siege tanks. Smartly, MMA just knows he doesn't really need to make any Vikings. He's just bringing as many medevacs in as he can, trying to heal up those Marauders. Ganji trying to get himself in a better position to defend that third base. He needs that base. He can't live without it. And it looks like MMA is actually just going to go for a drop. Going to siege up here at the edge. He sees there are some factories over there he can pick off. Well, he's actually changing his mind completely. He may try to drop Marauders on top of the siege tanks. That may be a strategy here. I think he wants to drop in the main. He's just forcing... He's forcing Ganji to kind of move around left and right, left and right, bounce back and forth. And uh oh, now the tanks are on siege and the Marauders are stepping forward. There are a lot of Hellions to buffer though. In fact, a lot of Hellions buffering so many siege tank shots in the Marauders. So Ganji getting off a lot of good hits. But the Hellions will fall here. And the siege tanks are unsieging. Now MMA can't see that. The Vikings going to land on top of these tanks. That's a pretty good move as he moves forward. Nice moves here by Ganji. It was like a sick dance move. If I saw that on the dance floor, I'd be like, dude, this guy's cool. I want to hang out with him later. But the Siege Tank's going to siege up here. Now, if the Marauders fall, this is going to be pretty huge. Ganji does break out here, does take a third base, does what Virus could not yesterday, although it's a completely different situation this time. We're seeing a similar style here from MMA, just trying to contain his opponent and get a better economy. Now, even though, again, even though MMA has a lot more Marauders than his opponent, as those Marauders fall, the Siege Tanks become much more important, and a lot of those Marauders are on low hit points. So MMA isn't as ahead as you think, but he is definitely significantly ahead here. Remember also that a lot of Ganji's army is in Vikings, which do help in the positioning battle, but like I said, when you've got that many Marauders out on the map, positioning isn't everything. But here comes that... Battle, nice little flank here from MMA, attacking on both sides, and if the Siege Tanks fall, that's going to be it for Ganji, and they do all fall. Nice flanking by MMA, GG. MMA takes out Game 1, the MLG champ, taking out Ganji, who took out MVP, and MMA, a player not even in Code A, but he took out MLG, and maybe he's going to take out this Super Tournament, ladies and gentlemen. Ganji looking a little unhappy with himself. But, he played well. Sometimes when you take a risk and get that third command center on a big lap, big map like Terminus Re, it works out for you. Sometimes it doesn't. But, I gotta say, I think it was a smart move by MMA, especially after maybe he watched those Nada games yesterday. Most likely he did. Um, and I think watching that may have influenced his style a little bit. You're, you're starting to see the style a little bit more on Terminus Re where you just kind of control the map. Usually the person who's controlling the map and having the, the soft contain into a hard contain is the one with the Vikings, but in this case it was the opposite. Because if you have those Vikings out, you can kind of control whether or not your opponent drops. So maybe 
If uh, Ganji realized what was happening earlier, could have tried to do some drop play to kind of turn the tables a little bit, force his opponent to turn around or maybe go for a base race. Because as it stands, four bases against two, you're just not going to win that fight. Uh, if you're contained, you're not going to really successfully be able to break out there. And the next map is going to be Crevasse, another relatively large map. Pretty big um, macro games you see on that map sometimes because you can take that backdoor expansion so easily. The countdown has started. Who's going to take game two? Will MMA close out and do um, do wonders again as he's been doing in his recent results here? Or will Ganji tie up the series? We'll find, here, find out here at the TSL Super Tournament on Crevasse.